What is up everyone? Andy Kruger here. Today's video, I'm going to explain why I never play fetch with my Belgian Malinois and what I like to do instead. Now, hang on, hang on. I can already hear the comments. Oh my God, Andy, no fetch. What the heck? Give your boy a chance to explain. Let's go. y'all first things first i want to preface this video by saying if you have a little puppy by all means definitely train them to play fetch chase and catch whatever you want to call it build that into the foundation for sure that is important and an important part of play if you have a pet dog if you have a smaller dog you can go and play fetch with them until your heart's content. But this video is about my Belgian Malinois, the both of them, and why I never play fetch with them. I'll make it real short and simple for the intro here. It's because 100% they will eventually get hurt. They will get hurt. I've been in working dogs a long time. Anyone that ever, boom, warms their dog up or exercises them by playing fetch. A lot of the time it goes great, but there's always that one time where the dog lands weird, the ball bounces weird, and the dog totally jacks themselves up. Again, if you have a little puppy or you have a little tiny dog that's real light on their feet, it shouldn't be an issue. I have a Jack Russell Terrier. He's 10 years old. I've been playing fetch with him since day one. He's always been fine, okay? He's 20 pounds. But if you have a big working Malinois, I'm telling you, stay away from it. Because if Jasper gets hurt, if Freddie gets hurt, my Malinois, then they're going to be on crate rest for a month, two months. Maybe it's something more serious. Maybe not. But the point is that's precious training time that I'm losing. If I have to shelf my young Malinois for a couple months because of something stupid that happened chasing a ball. This is such an important time in his life and in his training, especially during competition season. Never ever do it. I know so many trainers that they, here's a good example. They travel to a trial. They arrive a little early to get their dog acclimated and, and to warm up, so to speak. They're getting their dog loose, they throw the ball, something weird happens, and then the dog gets injured. The dog comes back limping. And if you're a competitor, this is the worst thing you can ever see. Hey, at least if something happens to my dog, I at least want it to be out on the field during the trial, like when it counts. But just tossing a ball around, I'm telling you, the dog's bound to get hurt. And I can already hear everyone out there saying, oh, that's not true, Andy. I have a Malinois. I always played fetch with him, and he never got hurt. That you know of. He never got hurt, or she never got hurt, that you know of. Dogs can't talk, and a good Belgian Malinois, their leg has to be falling off for them to show pain or start to favor it. So it's extremely likely your dog got tweak your dog tweaked something they got sore here or there this was funny that and you just whoop, never even noticed because they're a malinois they're tough but i'm telling you get rid of that fetch if you value your dog's legs i'm going to show you the exercises that i do that give the dog the exact same output as fetch give the dog the same experience as fetch but it's totally safe. Let's go. Okay, so here we go. No fetch, no throwing things. I'm gonna show you what I do instead. And just to preface this, it's a video about my opinion 
with my working dog. So if someone watching this, they play fetch with their dog, it's like their favorite thing in their whole life, you can keep doing that. You can play all you want. I'm just saying why I don't like it. This session that you're about to see, I consider this a warm up for Jasper before we actually start training. So this isn't a full on, I'm gonna exercise him and then put him away for the day. This is a way to get him totally warmed up, ready to train, even ready to compete without taking a ball and chucking it. Your dog will need some pre-existing obedience to do this session, okay? He needs a good sit, stay, down, stay, and the dog needs to know how to bring a toy back to you. So here we go, no fetch, let's hit it. Couché. My dog has a downstay. Now follow me. I'm warming him up, so I don't want to take him off the couch and send him into a full on sprint. Couché. You already know. Simple, easy, couché. I'm putting him in down. He already has his toy, he has it. He doesn't have to worry about trying to catch it somewhere. It's just getting the muscles loose, getting the blood flowing, warming everything up. A couple of runs like that back and forth. I can increase the distance. I'll do it one more time, let's go. Oh yeah, my boy's moving. My boy's moving, Couch. Step number one, I get the dog out, I give him his toy, he holds it, and I have him start running back and forth. Second exercise I do. I see. Bubble so now I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna put him in a sit stay. I put the toy several feet in front of him. I'm gonna go back about 50 feet I'm gonna say Y-E-S, which is his command to grab the toy and then ultimately run to me. I know everyone watching this, they're like, Andy, this is stupid basic. How dare you with this video? This is massively important. I'm giving him the same physical output he would get chasing after a ball, doing these exercises with the tug with a 0% chance he lands funny, the toy bounces weird, and this and that happens. Now I'm gonna show you my favorite one. Jasper. Opie. Couché. Babouge. This is maybe the, the most advanced warm up I do with him. It's my favorite. If your dog's never done this before, you can certainly try it, but you need to master it from a few feet away and then build incrementally from there. Yep. Bing. I put him in a downstay. I go out about 50 feet, have my tug here. I give him his release marker, which is yes. He beelines to me now at a full sprint. He blasts through that toy and then comes back to me. Let's do it again. Yep. Don't move the tug. There's a boy. Jasper, horrible out. You can't tell me that's not a dog that's warmed up. Now we got the pant going, we got the heart rate up. He's rocking and rolling. In a minute or two, he's gonna be ready to work. This is how I warmed him up before every competition I did with him, before every French ring training session I did with him, right in this very field. This is how I warmed him up. I see. 
Jasper, okay. Look at that dog. Boy, okay. Look at that dog. That's what a dog that's warmed up looks like. That's what a dog with no injury looks like. Now we're ready to train. See y'all next week. <laughs>